Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make a bedside table with a built-in nightlight. I started this project by making the shelves first, and I made them out of some reclaimed barn wood that I had. I figured out the width of the shelf that I wanted, and then I had to find that width within the pieces. A lot of sections of this wood were rotten or cracked, so I had to work around that. I gave everything a quick sanding to knock off the dirt and expose some of the saw marks. There were quite a few places on this where bugs had gotten in or it had just rotted over time, so I used a wire brush on my drill to clean them off. I wanted it pretty smooth to the touch. You just have to make sure not to go too deep using that wire brush. I used some tongue oil finish, which is a combination of tongue oil and polyurethane mixed together. It gives a really great finish if you do a couple of coats. So I put two coats of that on the top and the front of both of these pieces of wood. While that dried, I moved on to the metalwork for this. I used one inch square tubing for the frame. I used a speed square to draw the angles that I wanted, and then I cut them with a cutoff saw that I had just recently gotten. I used the first two legs as guides to cut the second two legs. You really have to take your time when going through two pieces of metal like this at the same time, because it'll bind up very quickly. The legs I cut had a 45 degree miter on the top, so I had to make a piece to go between two legs to connect them. I cut a miter on one end, marked the depth of the shelves that I would made, and cut the miter on the opposite end. I cleaned up all the cut edges from all the different pieces using a flap disc on my angle grinder. These welding magnets help hold the pieces in place while you weld them together. But be aware, they don't automatically give you a perfect 90 degree angle. You still have to line your pieces up correctly. I welded one side, flipped it over and welded the other, and then I made a duplicate frame for the other side of the shelf. I ground down all these, again with the flap disc, as to not grind off too much, and got them smooth so that you really couldn't see the miters anymore. I had to cut a few more pieces to connect the leg assemblies and reinforce them for the bottom shelf. I didn't want there to be any visible fasteners from the top of the shelves, so I used a flat bar and marked out two inch increments. I used my large cutoff wheel to cut through these and make some tabs that I could weld onto the frame. I had to clean off all these cuts just like everything else. I measured up six inches from the bottom of each one of the legs and made a mark. I pushed in the pieces for the bottom shelves. I was actually surprised at how much I had to bend the outer frame to fit those pieces in, but once they were in there, it squared everything up. I ground them down smooth just like all the other angles. I connected the two frames with pieces on the back side. These pieces were the same width as the shelves that I'd cut at the very beginning. In this case, I used more magnets. I wanted to hold the frames perpendicular to the cross pieces in two directions. It also helps a lot if you measure the distance between the frames on the top and the bottom to make sure that they're parallel. Once you get a small tack weld on each one of these joints, you can take away the magnets and then finish up with a solid weld to hold them together. With the frame upside down, I placed out the tabs to hold the shelves. Once I got them in the position that I wanted, I tacked each one in place and then did the full welds on all three sides of each tab. These tabs will be carrying the weight of the shelves and whatever you have on them, so you want them to be good welds. Make sure that you have a solid bead all the way around. They're going to be underneath it, so they don't have to be super pretty, but I did go ahead and clean them all up. I used a punch on each one of the tabs to make a mark so that I could drill a hole with a stepped bit. I sprayed each one with WD-40 to keep the bit cool while it was drilling through the steel. With all the holes drilled, I flipped the frame over and then countersunk the holes from the bottom side. I used a stripping disc to clean off and even out all the finish on all the surfaces. This doesn't actually grind it away, it's more for taking off paint and rust and things like that, but it gives it a really cool brush finish. I went over the whole thing with a couple of coats of spray poly. I want to say a special thanks to Casper for sponsoring this video. If you're not familiar with Casper mattresses, you should be, because they're fantastic. We've been sleeping on one on our bed for eight or nine months or so, and we love it. They're a combination of memory and latex foam, so they have the perfect amount of squish and the perfect amount of bounce. And one of the best things about Casper is that you don't have to go to a mattress store. You go to their website, you type in the code MAKE to get $50 off, they ship it to you in a box. When you open up the box, the mattress just inflates. It's pretty awesome to watch. So once you get the mattress, you can sleep on it for 100 nights, and if you decide you don't like it for any reason, they'll come get it and give you your money back. It's a great deal, it's a fantastic mattress. Go check them out, casper.com slash make. Use the code make to get $50 off your first purchase. All right, let's go back to the project. The polyurethane dries really quickly, so I set the shelves in place and laid the frame on its back. I just drove some wood screws in through my brackets into the shelves and they held in place very nicely. I wanted to add a night light to the back so I cut a short strip of LEDs. They have an adhesive back on them so they stuck easily to the top of the shelf. To hide the wiring on the back of the frame I just used some hot glue. This holds it in place and if I ever decide to take this off the hot glue will come off with no problem. 
You'll notice the white section of wire there, and that's actually a receiver for the remote that comes with the LED kit. Having a remote is pretty handy because you don't have to find a place for a switch, and you can just turn them on and off from anywhere in your bedroom. There's preset buttons for different brightnesses, and you can fade the light up and down. So I thought about painting the frame black, but once I got it all sanded down, I really like the kind of brush look on the raw metal. So I really like this combination of the raw metal and the reclaimed wood. As far as the LEDs, I think it works out pretty well, but I think I would rather have warm LEDs rather than these cool LEDs. These have more of a bluish tint, whereas the warm ones have a little bit more of a yellow tint. People talk a lot about the blue screen stuff, like if you're looking at your phone too much, it's harder to go to sleep. I think this particular color of LEDs are probably gonna do the same thing, but it's really easy to swap these out for a different color temperature strip. This particular remote that I have has three different settings for brightness, but then it also has a plus and minus. So you can set that brightness on the way that you want it, and then when you turn it on and off, it's gonna stay at that brightness. If for some reason you wanted to have a dance party, there's a bunch of different animations that you could put on, which would probably be really hard to go to sleep to. Now in my previous videos, you've probably seen me cut metal with a cutoff wheel, and that's worked all right, but it's not terribly accurate. And in this video, I was using a new saw that I got, and I was hoping that I would be able to cut miters really accurately, or at least more accurately than I could with a cutoff wheel. Truth be told, it didn't work out that well. They worked, and some welding and grinding covers up the inaccuracy of it, but I found that it didn't actually hold the steel at the angle that I wanted if I was trying to cut through it. So in the future, I'm probably gonna do a modification to that saw to try to hold the piece in place while it's being cut so that it doesn't drift. But that's just a word of warning for you. If you go to buy a saw like that, make sure you get one that can hold the workpiece in place while it's being cut. In the future, I'll probably get a metal cutting bandsaw. That would be probably a more accurate way to cut that stuff. But right now, I just don't have the space or the money. So I learned quite a bit about metalworking on this one, more than I knew before. And it was my first time cutting the miters trying to make a 90 degree angle. If you end up doing that, you might want to get the magnets that hold the pieces in place and maybe set up a 90 degree angle jig to hold the pieces at 90 degrees while you weld them together. I hope you found this one useful and I hope you like this project. And if you did, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments below or at IlikeToMakeStuff.com. I'd love to see some stuff that you are working on. And if you have some awesome tips, things like that, you can leave those down below or on any of the social networks. You can tag me on photos on Instagram or Twitter, post some pictures of what you're working on to my Facebook wall. I'd love to see that stuff. I've also got lots of other videos of all different types. So be sure to check those out. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.